Hello everyone, I hope you're having a good day. I am in the first, uh, first Peter chapter two, the second section. And this section has been a struggle for me because um, I've had to re stop this and record over and over again. Um, and I will share why as I get into the scriptures. So starting in verse 13, it says, For the Lord's sake, which is important, respect all human authority, whether the king as head of state or the officials he has appointed. For the king has sent them to punish those who do wrong and to honor those who do right. So I personally have struggled with this because I have seen, you know, in past years, um, you know, recently, you know, very recently, um, authorities that abuse their power. And I hate seeing that. It's very disturbing to me. Um, and it's disturbing to see what our country is becoming. And also, you know, even other countries, you know, laws that are enacted that um, I think are abuse of power and so forth. But the main point of this scripture is this, for the Lord's sake, obey those in authority. We know that authority is good because if we had no authority and no laws, we would have a Mad Max society and total chaos. So we do need laws 100%. Um, we do need police officers. We do need firemen. We do need um, governors, mayors, you know, and so forth. Now, can these people be corrupt? Absolutely. Um, these people are sinners. And just like us, they make bad decisions. They may make ungodly decisions or they may just make mistakes. So I would say this, pray for all those in authority. Uh, because first of all, the Bible calls us to. Um, and many times they have a difficult job. Some of them abuse it and some of them don't. But either way, God has placed a hierarchy of people in authority. So pray for them. And for the Lord's sake, obey the laws. And if you obey this Bible, then you should be just fine. Um, you know, will there come a day when they ask us to do things that are against this? We'll revisit that matter when it comes to that time. But right now, um, obey the authorities because um, laws are good because if we didn't have them, it would be a mess. And it's already a mess right now, but it would be really a mess. So going on, it says, It is God's will that your honorable lives should silence those ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. So we see all the time that Christians are mocked. We don't really see this a lot from other religions, but we see it particularly with Christians. And they make all kinds of terrible things they say or, you know, twist words or whatever. We can even see major Christians fall and it's an embarrassment. And so, and we can do it ourselves. We are not above that. But it says have honorable lives so that basically their accusations are foolish. They're nonsense. They're not real because we are living honorable lives. Then it goes on to say, for you are free, yet you are God's slaves. So don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. So just because we have accepted Christ and we are now saved, we are forgiven forever for our sins, we should walk in freedom to obey God's law, to be his slave per, per se, instead of sin's slave. We don't want to be enslaved to sin. We want to have freedom in Christ. So don't go back to your former ways is what it's saying. Respect everyone and love your Christian brothers and sisters. Fear God and respect the king. So that's very simple. It speaks for itself. Then it goes on to the section about slaves. So obviously we um, do not have slaves. And of course there is slavery still going on today with sexual slavery and people taking people as slaves to do all kinds of things so it's a horrible wickedness 
if you i would encourage everyone to go look up slavery um in the times the biblical times uh, uh mostly it was indentured servants who owed money to um a particular person and so they gave themselves to work for a period of years to free themselves finally at the end of those years for the debt they owed um and so you know but the question is how can we apply this today and also when they used when back in the day when christians used this to justify owning slaves that was ungodly and unbiblical and that is not what it was talking about so basically you have to always interpret scripture based on the time period also that it was talking about in the setting it was talking about then look at it also practically like how can i apply this today okay because we're not slaves we don't owe slaves so how can we apply this so i'm going to read this section and it's in chapter 8 to it it's uh, in verse 18 it says you who are slaves must accept the authority of your masters with all respect do what they tell you, not only if they are kind and reasonable, but even if they are cruel. For God is pleased with you when you do what you know is right and patiently endure unfair treatment. Of course, you get no credit for being patient if you're beaten for doing wrong. But if you suffer for doing good and endure it patiently, God is pleased with you. For God called you to do good, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you. He is your example, and you must follow in his steps. So, how can we practically apply this today? We all are under, going kind of back into the authority thing, we are all under authority. And sometimes we are, you know, have, have bosses that are just awful Maybe they're unfair, they're rude, they're mean. We've all heard the stories. I'm sure we all have stories. So when we're doing right, like he says, and we patiently endure it, we have a reward from God. He's pleased about that. We need to pray about that boss. We need to pray about ourselves. If they're doing something totally ungodly, uh, you know, stealing, whatever, we, have a, we should turn them in. You know, so, but basically we can apply this as authoritarian type of thing where we, um, you know, even if the person is a pain, let's say it that way, that we still, you know, respect, do our work, do it to the best of our ability um, because the Lord's watching. And also, um, you know, if we are doing wrong, well, then the Lord's not going to be pleased with it if we get disciplined because we deserve the discipline. But if we are doing right and we get wrongly disciplined and we patiently endure it, the Lord is pleased when we're not sinning in the process. We can still make the appropriate actions of, you know, appealing a decision, reporting it, whatever, but doing everything in a godly and biblical manner, okay? Um, so going on in verse uh, 22 is talking about Jesus. He never sinned because it's talking about Christ being our example and we're going to suffer. He never sinned nor ever deceived anyone. He did not retaliate when he was insulted nor threaten revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God who always judges fairly. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, you are healed. Once you were like sheep who wandered away, because that's what sheep do, but now you have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your souls. So that's the end of uh, chapter two. So the example is Jesus Christ. Um, we don't like being mistreated. It's not fun. It's irritating. Um, it, you know, we can become, you know, mad about it, impatient about it. I know I definitely can. This is, a, you know, a personal issue with me. And so, but the example is Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ suffered for us and we are going to have suffering. And how do we hold up under that suffering is the question. Are we going to be godly in that suffering or are we going to dishonor his name? 
So I will leave it at that as this has been a particularly more difficult one to expound on um, just because of the subject matter. And I think there's a lot of things that people struggle with in those passages about, you know, authority or government, you know, the slave issue on that one. Um, suffering is not a pleasant issue. So, but you know what? Scripture is not always, you know, easy peasy, as my grandkids would say. You have to work through it and you have to think about it and think about how it applies to your life and then obey it. So I will continue on tomorrow uh, with the next chapter, which is for wives. So I hope you have a good day.